Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Very excited. I am Jonah from Discover, and today we have Rosemary Groner. And before we get rolling with anything, want to make sure you can all hear us and see us all right. So please pop in the comments. Let us know that you can see and hear us. Also, feel free to call out where you're tuning in from, how you heard about Discover or Rosemary, or just something you're excited to learn today. Uh, we're always excited to hear all those things and that you're joining us from all over. Uh, Rosemary, would you give just a little hello and a wave so everyone can make sure they can hear you all right? Hey guys, can everybody hear me okay? Cheers, it's looking like some people are popping in that they can hear and see us. So I am gonna set a couple expectations for day first. If Rosemary goes too fast or has, I know she's got a lot of info, she's gonna try and throw at us. Uh, or if you have to get up from the computer or leave for a minute, don't fret because there will be a email that has the replay for you and the course offer, as well as a replay available here on the YouTube page or the event page on the Discover website. Uh, so don't fret. Also, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please try and save them towards the end. We are going to do a formal Q&A near the end after the presentation. If you think you're going to forget it, feel free to throw it in the comments. Uh, we'll just It's a little more guaranteed if you pop them in during the Q&A that we'll actually get to them. Um, and it looks like yeah, we're getting people tuning in. Everyone can hear us all right. So I'm going to give a formal introduction today. Uh, we, Like I said, we have Rosemary Groner, and she is going to be doing teaching us about the only safe way to quit your job and replace your salary from home. A couple things we can expect to learn. Discover the four steps that everyone must take if they want to find a secure way to make money from home. Learn how to identify your unique strengths and skills so that you're guaranteed to succeed. Little background on Rosemary. Rosemary spent her entire life chronically disorganized. She worked as a state trooper with an unprecedented schedule, long hours, and mandatory overtime. But everything changed when she finally got smart and started working with her personality instead of against it. She learned how to hack cleaning, meal planning, and budgeting to get the same results with much less effort. Rosemary learned how to automate most of the things she didn't love doing and how to incentivize herself to stick with it long term. She reduced her spending by $23,537 a year, paid off her debt, ditched the housework fights, kept the house clean, quit her job to stay home with her babies, and started a blog that has served over 10 million people in the last four years, learning how to escape the paycheck to paycheck cycle even if they suck at budgeting. Rosemary, I don't want to take up any more time, so I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Okay. Let's um, let's start right away with the slides, if you can load those slides up for me. Awesome. Okay, guys, we're here for the only safe way to quit your job and replace your salary from home. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure you're in the right place, and I'm going to be able to help you. You're in the right spot if you want to stay at home, but you still need to make a secured income. So you're not looking for the fast, cheap, and easy scams of prey and women who want to work from home. You want to learn all of the secure ways that you can make an income at home and not just the one along with their benefits, the drawbacks, and the security level. So what I do is I teach people how to work with their personality to get the results that they want. But this is not going to be one of those like, hey, like I'm going to teach you how to stuff envelopes and you're going to be making like thousands of dollars in just a few hours. Like that's not it's not what we're doing. So just real quick, if you could pop into the comments, just so that I can tailor this a little bit to where you guys are, like what work from home jobs have you heard about? Have you tried? Are you interested in common ones are blogging, multi-level marketing, which is things like Pampered Chef, Yvonne, LuLaRoe. Uh, being a virtual assistant, medical coding, or if there's something else, if you could just let me know. That way I can keep an eye on the comments and I can kind of tailor this a little bit. So what we're going to learn today is the four steps that everybody has to take if they want to find a secure work from home job. Skipping these causes a lot of stress. It causes you a lot of stress and it's one of the biggest issues that people have and why they aren't able to secure a work from home job, whether that means you work for someone else or you work for yourself. And the other thing I want to tell you is to stand till the end, because what I'm going to give you is a master work from home jobs list. And I'm also going to give you a couple other freebies that I'm going to tell you about during this training. The other thing I want to tell you is that what I'm teaching you today is a section of a step-by-step -step comprehensive course that we have called Exit Strategy, How to Quit the Job You Hate. 
it's not just if you want to work from home, but the vast majority of people that go through it end up wanting to work from home. Um, that's not necessarily true. Women typically want to work from home that take it. Men typically want to work out of the home. So if that is you, then I want you to take really good notes because this is going to be massive for you. We're also going to learn how to calculate the income you need to make from home. And I'm going to teach you the number one hack to successfully land any work from home job. And each of the four steps you're going to need to master in order to quit your job and replace your income from home without risk. And without risk is the major thing that we're talking about. We are not doing this with crazy leaps of faith. We're doing this so that it makes sense. And it's like guaranteed that you're going to be able to quit. And I want to tell you a little bit about um, where I came from or how I know that I can teach you about this. So I was a Virginia State Trooper for about nine years, and I worked a constantly changing schedule, mandatory overtime, long hours, and I had a lot of job dissatisfaction. And I wanted nothing more than to be a stay-at-home mom with our kids, but I was we were also over $30,000 in debt. We had no prior success with actually sticking to a budget. So when I'm telling John, like, I really want to come come home and just work from home. And he's like, uh, no, we can't budget with two salaries. How do you think we're going to budget with one salary? Which is a valid point, but not what I wanted to hear. So most of my friends at this time, I was like desperately just trying to get out of my job. I was, I was shot getting applications, anybody, anywhere that they would take me. Um, and most of my friends in multi-level marketing, which is things like LuLaRoe and Avon, they weren't really making a consistent salary unless they'd been there for years. And a few of them had literally lost their shirts or their leggings um, in kind of the LuLaRoe claps. And it just didn't seem like that was going to be something that I wanted to put my effort into. The other thing is that that really requires you to um, be able to sell to your friends, be able to sell face to face. That's not really my jam. And blogging seems amazing. And as a blogger, I can tell you it 100% is, but it's also not quick or guaranteed income at all. So some people have the skills and abilities to make it as a blogger and some people don't. And so what often happens is people are like, oh, you know, Rosemary's a blogger and she makes a ton of money. I'm going to do that too. And that might work, but you're kind of chasing someone else's dream. It's better to find out if you have the skills and the aptitude to make it as a blogger before you kind of go down that route. And living on one income, which is what I really wanted to do, was met with a lot of resistance because of our debt and our inability to stick to a budget, which, I mean, makes a lot of sense. I don't blame him. So what I did around all of this time, and if you know anything about me, I'm really popular with home management because I teach people who are kind of like complete and total hot messes who have never had a clean house, never had a clean room, never had a clean car. I teach them how to work with their personality so that they don't need willpower or motivation to, to do those things. And we've been incredibly successful at that. And the whole basis of what we teach is that we don't try to change you. We're just going to accept who you are, whether that means that you're going to eat the brownie instead of the kale smoothie. If that means, you know, you're going to throw the trash on the floor or the laundry on the floor instead of in the basket, like we're just going to work with that and find ways to work around or with your personality than trying to rely on willpower or motivation. And it's been massive. So what we always do at the core of this is we use what we really want as motivation to do what I need. And then we work around the obstacles that your natural personality kind of take. So when I applied this to being able to quit my job, just like in home management, just like in everything else I've tried it with, like weight loss and everything else, like it worked seemingly instantly. We were able to reduce our spending by over $23,000 a year just that first year. I was able to quit my job to stay home within uh, my, my oldest child, so my first baby's first birthday. That was my goal. So the second he was born, I wanted out by his first birthday was my goal of I was going to be able to leave my job. You know, on his first birthday was my last day in the Virginia State Police. And I ended up opening up a home daycare for three kids in addition to my son to make up my salary. We paid off all of our debt and I then transitioned to blogging and I scaled my business to work 10 hours a week from home and maintain that schedule and income for five years and counting. Um, actually, these slides are outdated. It's actually, I think we're going seven years now. So I started teaching others to do the same. Um, I loved the home daycare. It got me out of my job. It gave me a consistent schedule. Um, but when I started writing on the blog, I was so excited about all these changes that I was making because this is stuff that I had tried and failed for years. Like I had never had a clean house. I had never had 
I'd never had a budget that worked. And then it felt like when I, when I unlocked the secret to working with my personality, everything felt so freaking easy, like not sitting on the couch eating Cheetos easy, but like way easier than anything else I had done. And it was working. It was working like really fast. So I started the website to try to teach other people who are like me, like how to kind of hack their personalities. And it just took off. We've had over 18 million readers at this point. It's just, it's been absolutely nuts. And I've been doing this for, I think we're going on seven years now. Um, so the one thing that I need you to understand before we even get into anything else is that this is not your fault. Like the expectations on women in 20, 2021 are absolutely insane, right? We're supposed to be like Pinterest birthday parties and like sexy wives when we're 50 and like in all of these expectations, we're supposed to be equal breadwinners. Like we have all of the expectations on our shoulder and it's impossible to handle all that for anyone. Working at home seems like a dream come true because it gives you the ability to switch a little laundry during the day, like throw in dinner a couple hours early. And it, what it really does, is it gives you margins in your time. And everybody is selling us this dream, right? They're like, oh, like we've got this proofreading course, just drop a thousand dollars on this. You can learn this work at home skill and you can work from anywhere. Or, you know, MLMs are like, you know, yeah, just join, join my leggings team and like you're going to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And even just outright scams where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, send me a check for $200 and we'll send you a list of work from home jobs. And people fall for this because there's so much stress. Like they want to get out. They want to have more margins in their time to be able to kind of like meet the expectations that they set from themselves. But it's really, really hard to do that. And then you've got bloggers and influencers that are kind of living the dream. And then you look up to those people and you're like, I want to do that too. And a lot of people can do that. But here's what I need you to understand. You don't have to do any of this to work from home. You literally don't have to do any of this. You can work from home spending zero money working with whatever skills and aptitude you naturally have. And that's what we're going to teach you today. Like, I don't want you, if someone is telling you about a work from home offer, there is usually a financial reason why they're doing it. That's just a fact. It, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense for them to take their time to tell you about this amazing work from home gig, unless there's some financial benefit for them. So I want to talk to you about why you want to work from home, because that's an important reason. There's different people want different things from work from home job. You, it could just be that you want the freedom to do the laundry or work on dinner during the day, because that makes home management a million times easier. You may want to be able to stay at home with your kids. You may have medical or disability reasons where um, we get this a lot with our students with, uh, I think it's called fibromyalgia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but fibromyalgia is a very common issue where they might be like super heavy work mode for, you know, 20 days. But then when they crash, they can't really do anything for five days and they're not able to anticipate when that five days happens. That makes it really difficult for them in a traditional workplace, but from working at home, it's a lot easier for them or they lost their job and they don't really have a choice. So we're going to go through right now the four steps that everyone has to take if they want to find a secure work from home job. And for following these four steps is almost going to guarantee your success. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over your budget. We're going to find your magic number, what you actually need to transition to come home. Then we're going to tackle your personality. We're going to analyze the needs, what your personal aptitude is, and what you are guaranteed to thrive in. And then we're going to look at research and we're going to step out a path for you to obtain that job, whether you're working for someone else, whether you become a blogger, whether are you. Uh, work for yourself. And then we're going to take action until we get that job. So for the budget, we need to find the magic number that you need to live on to be able to come home. And we do this by calculating what you need to make to stay home and live on the same budget. So I want to give you an example here of Jill, which is one of our earliest students. So the first thing you're going to do is calculate the difference in what you're spending on budget would be if you came home. This doesn't mean that you get a different job. It just means if you were to literally quit your job today, how could your budget change? And for an example, at the time, Jill was making $3,000 a month take home pay, not gross. So gross is before taxes and take home pay is what you actually like see in your paycheck. So Jill was making $3,000 a month. She was working outside of the home. She was super stressed. She hated her job. She wanted nothing more than to come home with her kids. And automatically, if she came home, she would save $1,700 to cancel daycare if she stayed home, guaranteed. 
And then she estimated that she would save about another $150, which was things like coffee, lunches out at work, things that she probably wouldn't need if she were if she were working at home. Now, it's an important point to note that Jill could just cut those out of her budget either way, but she'd had the opportunity to do that before uh, for years and she never has. And then another $450 savings would be, that's the amount that Jill reasonably believes she can reduce her family's grocery budget. So they both, at the time, they both worked uh, shift work and they were on different shifts. So one was on, I believe it was midnights and one was on day shift. And they were spending over $1,200 to feed their family of four. They ate out a lot. They have schedules that change frequently and they really struggled with meal planning, which is something that we, we teach a lot in this situation. And so what we call Jill's situation was that she would buy groceries and then they would rot in the fridge and she would go out and eat fast food because that was all that she had time for. So, and I want to put a side note here that Jill can actually reduce this a lot more, but I love the fact that she was so conservative there because if you, if you estimate this too much, like if you're like, oh, we can cut our spending in half, that makes it really difficult for you to, when you come home to actually stick with that. And we want to set Jill up to win here. So that ended up being equal to about $700. That's the amount that Jill makes by working outside of the home every month. So if she came home, she is her budget is going to be at a loss of $700. So the bad news for Jill is that that basically means that she's doing a job that she hates, that she feels like she's stuck in and she works insane hours. She's constantly stressed. She's trying to be a decent mom. While daycare gets to see the babies that she really just wants to be home with, she makes literally $4 and six cents an hour, uh, which sucks. Now, if she loves her job, who cares? That's awesome. Our kids are going to be in school in a few years. It's all going to work out. It, you know, that's fine. But if she wants to come home, she knows that she's only making $4 an hour, but that doesn't really mean that she can just quit because that measly $700 a month is a massive amount, a very overwhelming amount that she would need to make up if you don't know how to do this stuff, if you don't know what you're doing. And really, if you think about it, she's been struggling with budgeting for years, so it's going to have to be more than $700. It seems really ominous and overwhelming. This is what we call trapped. This is how most people start, right? So now if they rocked at budgeting, leaving their job would be no big deal because they know exactly how much they'd spend. They know how they can reduce their budget and quitting isn't that scary. But typically what happens is people are in Jill's situation where they already suck at budgeting. They already feel like their life's out of control. Like the idea of quitting and losing, you know, her salary is terrifying because what if it doesn't work out? She's got kids that rely on her. So we're going to teach you how to get out of this situation today. The first thing we do is substitutions without sacrifice. We're going to go through and reduce your spending in ways that you are not even going to care about. So I'm going to give you Jill's example. And I want to give you a warning that this is extremely personal to each, pe each person. Like Jill did things that I could never do. And I did things that Jill would never do. It's really going to depend on the things that you care about. But in Jill's situation... She reduced her fund money or random spending from $300 a month to $100 a month. Those are things like events, books, toys, things for the kids, uh, things for the household that weren't really necessary. Canceling cable and her hardline phone. They still have cell phones. They just use that. That saves $120 a month. They canceled their gym membership. They saved 50. You can go through this whole list here, but they saved um, $800 a year by cutting out all presents. They did um, they did letter exchanges and uh, I can't remember, she did something else that was like more like a handmade thing. It was really cute, but, and they started exchanging can downs in a trade group on Facebook for their kids' clothes. So they didn't have to spend any money on new kids' clothes and that was $30 a month. Um, they switched cell phone plans, $80. You can keep going down, but she was able to save um, $700 a month in her budget right away. Now. Jill hasn't quit yet, but she's just reduced her spending by $700. What she's going to do or what she did do is she put that money that she saved every single month in a hard to reach account. We use Ally or Capital One 360. Those are the two that we recommend because they actually give you a really dis decent interest rate on that money. And what that means is that by hard to reach, it means that if you put this in your savings account that's associated with your checking account that you see every day, you're going to find reasons to use it. Emergencies that happen, like something's going to break. And if you have the money available, you're going to spend it. 
We put it in a hard to reach account because I don't want you to look at it. I don't want you to think about it. I don't want you to use it. It's just not available. It's like floating off into space. Um, and we don't ask for debit cards with those accounts. The only way to get access to that money is to transfer it to, um, it's to transfer it to your normal bank. So something that happens pretty frequently right here is that people are like, you know what? I, this is great, but I can't stick to a budget. We've tried this for years. I know I get it. Like we teach this too. The thing is you have to work with your personality instead of against it. Like if you're the type of person that doesn't have willpower, then you just need to accept the fact that you don't have willpower and we need to work with your personality. We need to incentivize savings. That's the easiest way to work with your personality. And what that means is that we take, we set a budget, a reasonable budget based on like real numbers of what you spent last month, not like made up numbers of what you think you can spend or like what you saw on Pinterest on somebody else's budget. And then 80% of whatever you are under budget is going to go to pay off debt or put in savings. 20% of whatever you are under budget is going to go to you in a special account called the Blow Money account. You can spend it on whatever you want. You can buy shoes, you can buy makeup, you could buy Hobby Lobby, you can buy out target, whatever you want. And I don't want to get too deep into the budgeting because that's not really what we're here for today. But basically this works exceptionally well to make even the hardest like spender a safer, like it flips the toughest cases of chronic disorganization. Um, and then we also use the motivation of the happiness factor. So the happiness factor, and I'll give you an example of this, like so what happens is when you are able to come home and quit that job you hate, you're just elated. Like you're really, really happy. And when you are happy and you have time, it makes it so much easier to master things like home management and budgeting because you're in a position that you are crazy excited about all the possibilities of the future. Um, and I give the example of I get to do the dishes now instead of I have to do the dishes. Like when you come home and you're working at home, it's like, I get to do the dishes today. And when you're stuck at work and you know that those dishes are waiting for you at the end of the day, it's like, I have to do the dishes. So what ends up happening is in Jill's situation, you know, she's saving all this money. She's finally rocking at budgeting. She's got $700 a month that she's putting away when she hasn't been able to stick to her budget in years. So she's not even noticing the reduced spending because we didn't really change anything that was drastically important to her. And she's crazy excited about the possibility of getting to leave her job, but she is still really stressed about money because they have a ton of debt. And so she's finally getting progress. Shouldn't she stay in her current job and just pay off her debt? And on paper, that probably looks like the right answer. And if that's what you want to do, then I fully support that. There's nothing wrong with that. However, the happiness factor comes into play. Jill tried budgeting for years and years and she always gave up, right? And then she knocked it out of the park. She reduced her spending easily in just a few month, months and she saved up almost $3,000 in an emergency fund because she knew that she's going to need it. So why did that happen? Why has she tried and failed for years and all of a sudden it was like that? And that's because Jill found something in life that she wanted to fight for. She saw an opportunity to be happy, less stressed, and finally getting to live a life that she was excited about. Nothing was going to stand in her way. She moved mountains because she was motivated. That's the secret to staying at home. So the reason why this worked for Jill is because she wanted this bad enough to do it. If Jill did not have or honestly believe that she had the ability to stay home within 12 months, Jill would not have been able to stick to that budget. That's kind of the secret behind this. We used what her, what her true want was to get her the results that she needed. So I want you to make me a commitment because everybody always listens to this and they're like, oh, this is great information, but they never actually do it. So if you know that you want to do this and if you know that you want to quit, then just type the phrase, I'm calculating my magic number tonight into the chat box. You're committing that you're actually going to do this and you're not just going to listen to this. Once we have your budgeting under control, that's when we start dealing with your personality and your unique needs. So you can look at personality testing like a perfect example would be me as a trooper versus me as a home daycare versus a blogger. So me as a trooper, I loved being a state trooper. I loved helping people. I loved being like a beacon of hope or a beacon of light in somebody's like worst day. 
all of the parts of that job where I get to change somebody's life for the better made me ridiculously happy. But one of my personality traits, and it's kind of like one of my biggest downfalls is that I am very low adaptability. It's my biggest weakness. And what that means is that if you say like, Hey, Rosemary, let's run to Staples and then we'll go to Target. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then instead you go to Target first and then Staples, like I, I will be very stressed. It doesn't make any sense to anybody else, including myself, but that's just the way it goes. I have to know what's coming up next at all times. Well, as a state trooper, that's not possible. You don't know when you're going to be able to use the bathroom next. You can go 13 hours without eating. Like, and even on your off days where it seems like you would be stress-free, you can get called in for overtime at any moment. And so like for that nine years, like I was incredibly stressed and it wasn't about all the bad stuff that happened. It was really honestly just about the adaptability. I don't like to be adaptable. When I quit and run the home daycare, a lot of people would be like, oh, that's so much harder. But the daycare fit my personality perfectly because I got to be the hero, right? Like I got to win all the time. I got to be like a, a, I was basically paid to be a Pinterest mom, right? And when you're doing something that you love, like it just seems easy. So when I was a trooper, I would technically work 40 hours a week, but it was usually more like 50 or 60. When I was a home daycare operator, I worked, um, 50 hours a week, but though, but I had weekends and holidays off and those hours are very set in stone. I never had to switch them. And again, I had full control of my day. Like my kids were, were tiny that I think my oldest at the time was two. So like I had, I could be in full control of what we did, what activities we did, where we went. And so like, I was, even though unexpected things still happen, like a kid gets sick or something, I am in full control of what happens in the next 30 minutes, which was like, I can't even tell you how joyous that was. And then as a blogger, it's the same thing, right? I set up my business to run pretty much automated so that I am always in control of what happens next in my day. So th that's a perfect example of like, like a really vulnerable kind of a creepy personality trait that I have. It's a really weird one, but it like, this just works for me so well. If I had stayed as a state trooper for my whole life, my 20 years or whatever, could I have done it? Yes. Was there aspects of the job that I liked? Yes. Did it work with my personality? Absolutely not. But both a home daycare and a blogger does work with my personality. And we're going to teach you how to find jobs that work with your personality. So the other part of this, it's not just about your personality traits. It's also looking at your unique history and skills. And I'll give you some examples. So there's things that you are really good at that have nothing to do with personality traits. It's your interests, it's your work experience, your school experience, like just random things that you're good at. And I'll give you an example. So as a state trooper, we did a lot of accident reconstruction for fatal accidents or accidents like that. That's a, that's a pretty random, unique skill that not a lot of people have. And it's one that it's very valuable because you can then go and work for an insurance company and work on kind of the private side of accident reconstruction, trying to determine who's at fault for an accident when the insurance companies are fighting back and forth. And that's a very valuable skill. Same thing with even like a love of Pinterest, like the, the social media app. If you love Pinterest and you are all about Pinterest and you love pinning all day and like you just want to, you just want to be on Pinterest all day, that's a valuable skill because Pinterest is a massive marketing tool and people are looking for virtual assistants that understand Pinterest, right? That know Pinterest rather than train someone that has no idea how to use it. They are looking for super fans of Pinterest because those are going to be the easiest people to train because they know what works on Pinterest because they're in it all the time. Same thing, Google slides, like the presentation that I'm doing right now. Um, there are people who have to do Google slides or slideshows or anything like that, um, PowerPoint presentations for their jobs all the time. And maybe they don't like it or maybe they do love it. But there are bloggers, there's authors, there's speakers who are constantly looking for people just to design PowerPoint presentations. So if that's a skill you have, that's a very valuable skill. And then there's lifestyle considerations. So there's things that are unique to you. So we commonly see this come out in anxiety, ADHD, medical issues. I think I mentioned that fibromyalgia is a really common one with students. Caring for a special needs uh, child or caring for a parent with like Alzheimer's or something, dementia, that's another common one. Your current and future financial situation. This isn't talking about debt. 
I don't care so much if you have debt. What this is talking about is that if you are like four years away from being a retirement age versus you are 23 years old, the jobs that you're available, the risk that we're willing to take on in like retirement and healthcare and things like that are very different if you're five years away from retirement versus if you're 23. So we have to consider that in jobs that we're going after, whether that means you're working for yourself or someone else. And then health insurance too. Like if you have no prior health conditions, no prior health conditions. If you have no current health conditions, um, health insurance isn't actually as big of a deal as most people think it is because they have private health shares right now, which means that like for, as an example for like, um, and keep in mind, I have much higher income now, but like as a high, as a high income with no deductions or no discounts on Obamacare, we were paying about $1,200 a month plus a $13,000 deductible for health insurance on a health share same high income, same everything. We pay $500 a month with um, a deductible of $2,000 a year. So there's there's a pretty massive dis difference of what is available to you depending on your income. Health insurance is not a big deal, but if you have, if you've got cancer, right? Like we can't switch you over to a health share because a health share isn't going to cover that. So that matters. We're going to need a job that has good health insurance. And that is probably not going to be, um, on, on entrepreneurial. Okay. So then, um, uh, we need to research at that point, we're going to step on a master plan to land the work of home job of your dreams. We're going to research whether you can actually get this job. If it works with your needs and your aptitude and how long it's going to take, we're going to choose a job that's going to meet all of your needs. And it's going to be the easiest transition to, and then we're going to create a step-by-step -step path to get your jobs. Step-by-step -step path to get your top jobs is usually going to involve, um, if, particularly if it's entrepreneurial, but even sometimes if you're working for another company, finding someone in that position and getting them on the phone and say, if I want to do this, what's the quickest, fastest way for me to do that, right? So like, if you're interested in blogging, you have the aptitude to be a blogger, I'm going to say the quickest, fastest way to do that is to get a step-by-step -step course, right? Like six-figure blogger, elite blog academy, something like that. It's going to cost money. It's not going to cost as much as a college career, but you're going to have to invest in that. And the, the difference here, though, is that instead of blindly going, OK, I want to work at home, so I need to be a blogger, we're understanding that we have the aptitude and the skills to thrive in that environment. We know that we have what it takes to be successful in it. And then we're investing in something that we know we have what it takes to be successful in. So. The other thing that I want to tell you is that I've been teaching this for two years now three years now, maybe. And I have never once had a person that needed to go back to college to switch jobs, to be in a job that they loved. And I think that that is actually a big barrier or objection to people when they're like, they feel stuck in their jobs because they're like, well, I can't go back to college because I still haven't paid off my old student loans. Or like, I don't have the money for that. In reality, like you can just get that out of your mind because college is not a barrier. I've never once in a single time have I ever seen someone that needed to go home um, to needed to go back to college. And I'll give you an example of this is I want you to think about me as a daycare owner and me as a blogger. I'm perfectly content in either job. Both jobs work with my personality. Obviously, I get paid significantly more and I work less as a blogger, but I was happy in both jobs. And the reason why I started with the daycare is because like blogging was going to take a lot of time and it was a little bit more risky. The daycare took zero time. I had, I was fully booked and I had deposits in place before I even quit my job. And I never had a waiting list for, of less than 24 kids at any point. So if someone left the daycare, there was 24 people waiting to take their spot. So there was very, very little risk. So it makes sense just to do the easiest path of the thing that you're going to love. And then if you've got higher aspirations, absolutely go for that higher aspiration, but just take the thing that's going to make you happy first before you like kind of go for gold. So the other thing at that point, you know what you need to do to get the job. So you're just going to take the actions and the secret to success here is targeted applications, highlighting your natural aptitude in that job. The way that you do this is that where I was failing when I was a state trooper and I was like just shotgunning applications everywhere, I had no idea why I would be good at anything. Like in my mind, I'm like, I'm a state trooper. I have zero skills. Like this does not, this does not translate to anything except for maybe command presence. And like, where is that going to be beneficial? 
So at the time, I didn't know why I would be good for anyone. And I would just take any job that seemed like it would fit the salary and I would just apply for it. That's never going to get you the job. It never is. The reason why we go through all this personality testing, one, is so that you land in a job that you're really going to thrive in. But the second most important thing is that you know how to articulate why this is the right job for you. As a business owner myself, when I have an, uh, have an opening and I'm looking through all these applications, looking for that unicorn, looking for that people who is literally made to do this job, who's going to thrive in that role, whose natural aptitude is to be successful in this, and they're looking for me. So when you do it this right way, it's, it's an automatic match. You're going to stand up so much higher than all of the other people that are going after this job. Because 90% of the people who are also putting in applications are just shotgunning applications. And when you go into that interview, you're going to know exactly why you're made for this job, why this is a shoe in for you, why this job is literally made for you. And you're going to be able to articulate that in a way that that business owner is going to be like, yeah, that's all true. You are literally made for this job. Let's make it happen. So. At that point, Jill is home. She's done her personality testing. She's done her research. She stuffed everything out. Could she just stay at home working? Technically, yes, right? She reduced her spending by $700. She had a significant other who was making money. Not everybody has that. Not everybody gets to just come home without already securing a job. But in her case, she could have done that. So her new budget put her in the same financial situation she was in before, before we started any of this, but she still has a whole lot of debt and she was barely making ends meet before. So she's not really in a much better financial situation, but she's happier. Once she went through the personality unique, unique needs testing, she determines the jobs that she can do that are never going to feel like work. That is the goal to never have it feel like work. And they give her the ability to be a parent first, which is what she really wanted, earn an income second and stay home with her kids. So she took her love of kids and teaching and her personal history. So Jill grew up in a house that speaks Spanish as a, I don't, I don't think it was Spanish as a second language. I think her parents both spoke only Spanish, but she speaks English. And now she teaches ESL classes online, which is English as a second language classes while she stays home ranger, raising her kids. Within just a few months, Jill was making $1,000 a month, working 15 hours a week, doing something that gave her passion and purpose and that never felt like work. And she was excited to do it. She ended up paying off all of her debt in less than three years, and she's planning to work 20 hours a week when her kids end up being old enough to go to school. That is like, she's such a great example because this is Jill's story, right? Like, this is what she loves to do. Your story is going to look nothing like Jill's. It's going to look nothing like mine. Like, it's going to be completely dependent on your personality, your unique needs. So, one of the things that happens here that people get stuck on is they have no idea what they want. And if you think it's just you, it's not. It is so common. And the reason why is particularly if you're a woman or a mom, like you, you are so busy and you just feel like you're constantly drowning that you do not have time to think about the things that are not working in your current life. Like, what do you want to change? If you could do anything what would your life look like? And I want you to include as many details as possible and spend the week adjusting and making it complete. I'm going to give you a worksheet to help you create your vision at the end of this. That's going to help you along with that master list of work from home jobs. As simple as it sounds like writing it down and committing in paper, it's a huge important step in the process. And we do this all the time. The thing that I need you to realize is that very infrequently are people able to look at their job or look at their life and say, I'm not happy because of X, Y, and Z. Most of the time, people don't know why they're not happy. If you had asked me while I was working in the state, please, do you like your job? I'd be like, oh my God, I love it. I love being that beacon of hope. Like I love helping people on their worst day. Like our department had a motto that said, you can be tough as nails and still be courteous. And I, and I loved everything about that job. But I also was incredibly stressed. Like I would have said, I am so stressed. And most people would have assumed that that's from, you know, well, it's a dangerous job. You're doing this and that. But it wasn't that. It was the fact that I was constantly had no idea what was coming next. Until I was able to do the personality testing and I realized how low adaptable I was. <laughs> when I started paying attention, I was like, oh my gosh, this is why I'm so miserable. And once I was able to put myself in a situation where I did have full control over the next 30 minutes or 60 minutes of my life, 
it, it really like solidified that that's what I was looking for. So that's what I, that's why I want you to take the personality test before you start doing a ton of thinking about what's not working for you, because that's going to help give you a lot of clarity. And so Kelly's another student uh, from a couple years ago. And she said, two years ago, I felt stuck in a job that I hated and I saw no way out. We were in debt. We were constantly fighting about me quitting and we never stuck to the budget. When you explained the steps I needed to take to quit, everything suddenly made sense. I stopped asking for permission because I don't need it. I loved her saying that. I love that. You don't need it. We reduced our spending by $11,452 a year. I quit my job within six months and replaced my salary working from home doing the same job as a school counselor with a virtual school. Oops. Um, I get to be home with the kids. When the kids get home and the ability to switch a load of laundry during the day is life changing. So I need you to understand why you've never been able to quit before. The, the first secret is that you have to tackle things in the right order. Do the budget first. Put the money aside so that you've got a nest egg and you've got a little bit of a security cushion when you actually quit. I want you to find a job that fits your unique personality and needs. If you don't, if you don't take those personality tests, if you don't pay attention to the personality test, then you are just going to be end up in the same situation that you are now. It'll be a new job, new salary. You may be working from home, but you're still not going to be happy because you're not choosing a job that thrives with your personality. We are not taking what comes available. We are, we are literally aligning our own stars to meet exactly what our needs are. And then we're going to qualify that for the job. We're going to get whatever work experience we need so that we can land that job. And then you're going to succeed at that job. The succeeding at the job is the easiest part because once you qualify with, for it and you pick the job that works with your unique personality, like you can't fail at it because it's not even going to feel like work. Secret number two, you have to proactively seek out opportunities instead of waiting for them to land in your lap. And hint, the ones that land in your lap likely are not worth the effort. Again, if someone is telling you about this, there's a financial incentive for them to do that, which is great. Could you be the next like top seller in a leggings empire? Absolutely. That might, I have actually seen people who rock at MLMs. They're really, really good with network marketing because they're incredibly social and they believe in the product. And it seems very easy for them just to make friends and, and show the products. Like, but why would you put money into that or put time and effort into that without just knowing what your skills are, what your aptitude is? So I don't have anything against MLM. I don't have anything against blogging. Obviously, I'm a blogger. I think if you have the aptitude for this, it's the best job in the entire world. But do you really care if you're a blogger or do you care if you're home, working at home, making enough money for you to be thrilled with and just happy with your life? So if you don't have the aptitude for blogging, why spend the next 10 years of your life trying to make that happen? Or if you don't have the aptitude to be a course creator, why spend the next 10 years of your life trying to make that happen and instead shift it to whatever your natural personality is and lean and rock at a job like super quickly. Secret number three, you have to work with your personality to find the job so you have a natural aptitude to thrive in and then quickly train for the skills you need to succeed as cheaply as possible. And again, once again, I've never seen a student need college to do this. So what ends up usually happening here is it's like, well, great, this is all great, but I'm never going to get my spouse on board. I know that this is a really scary concept because people rely on you for food and shelter. That is a huge deal. Your spouse hates this idea because he doesn't want to risk it. But the thing is, I don't want you to risk it either. This is a logical step-by-step -step plan customized to your unique situation and concerns. There is no crazy leaps of faith. He's going to get on board when he sees it as a logical plan guaranteed because it's so much better. And the first thing that happens when people attempt this, and we always teach people in any of our courses, don't even tell people that you're doing a new program because let your, let your results speak for what you're doing. Like don't make a big announcement. Like I'm doing this amazing thing and I'm going to do all these steps and then I'm going to quit my job. Like you're setting yourself up to either fail or be ridiculed, right? If you fall off the bandwagon for a few months and then take it back up, why not just do the steps, be in place, and then like have the results to be like, so that when you're suddenly saving $3,000 and he's like, how are you sticking to the budget? Why are you doing such a good job? Then you could be like, oh, well, you know, I'm stepping out the plan for X, Y, and Z. And I really want to go do this. And, you know, my personality, my aptitude thrives in this. And 
you've already made massive changes. You're already a success. Like that's when you would say that there's a new program. We do this with home management too. Like don't tell them that you're going to do a new program to clean the house, clean the house. And then when he's like, Oh my gosh, like what is going on? Why is the house so clean? Be like, Oh yeah, I started this new system. That's it. That's all you do. Sorry. I get really passionate about that. I don't even know why. All right. Um, so when you do this the right way, sticking to a budget is easy because that's how you get what you want. And choosing the job is easy because you completely understand your aptitude, your personality, and your unique needs. And you get hired to succeed because you were literally made for that job and you know how to express it. And your work at home job supports your life instead of taking away from it. And hint, if you don't want to work at home, this doesn't just work with work at home. You can literally work anywhere, but most people want to work at home. So that's why we do that. It's not just about your job though. Like this doesn't just affect your, affect your job. It affects your whole life. You have the happiness factor, right? Where you are just excited to get to live your life because you are now in control of your life. You have better relationships. And we just saw this with my best friend whose husband was a police officer and he worked overnight and this man was just constantly tired. And he has been like snappy and kind of like really tough to live with for like two years. He quit a couple of weeks ago, ironically, because we went through this progress. We went through this whole process with him. And now he's a home inspector. And like the the difference in this man's like stress level and personality, she's like, it's an entirely new individual. And like, I even see it just being their friends. I'm like, this is like a totally new guy. And it's because now, one, number one, he's got sleep. Number two, he's happy. He's making the same income, but he works half of the hours and he's in complete control of his life. And I, this is awful. Now it's going to sound like I don't want people to be police officers. If you love being a police officer, you, you have the aptitude, you should totally be a police officer. But you also have time for yourself because that's important too. So using our system, Jill paid off her debt in less than three years, working 15 hours a week. And she plans to work 20 hours when her kids end up going to school. And Jill's final email to me and she said, this is so different from my old job. Like I wake up every single day to a life that I'm excited to live. And that is the goal. That's what we're trying to get to. But Jill's story is only going to work for her. My story is only going to work for me. This is so custom that it's completely unique to the person on it. So at the end, you're going to end up with a story that works for your life, not ours. So the question is, why did you show up? Are you sick of wondering if there's more life than spending all day doing something you hate? You're frustrated because you want to have a life that excites you and the freedom to do what you want to do. And you believe that there's more to life than just working, but you just want to be told what to do, when to do it, and how to do it to actually be able to quit your job and work from home without a crazy leap of faith. You have two options. You can DIY it. I went through the whole process today. You, you're going to have time uh, after to ask questions of me and I'd be happy to answer them all. Or you can learn step by step. We have the exit strategy course. It's step by step. It's super comprehensive. It goes into ridiculous detail. We do every roadblock that has come up in, with students for the past three years. So typically, if you end up with a roadblock or something that is like obstructing you from moving forward, we've already had that happen and we can tell you how to get around it. And rare cases, it's a new one. You email me and then I create a new roadblock um, and answer that to tell you how to get around that. So exit strategy is the fastest way to quit your job and make up your salary from home, even if you live paycheck to paycheck. And I know that this question is going to come up, so I'm just going to answer it now. If you are happy with your job, but you want your spouse to quit your job, this, like, you can still do this. Like, just, you would just get the class for them and they would take it. Like, we have um, way more men in exit strategy than we do with any of our home management programs. And it doesn't have to be from working at home. If he just needs a new career and he just like, um, like my best friend's husband, he doesn't really work at home. Like he's a home inspector. So he has like, he's an entrepreneur and he has like um, adaptability like to his own schedule. He has full control of his own schedule, but he doesn't actually like work from home. But it could also be that they end up working for a different company and that's fine too. So what you get is a proven step-by-step -step comprehensive path to master your budget, choose a work from home job that fits your unique personality needs and quickly gain the skills you need to land any work from home job. We do done for you video-based trainings, we have detailed workbooks, and we also give you a bonus of the work from home time block strategy, which if you're, if you're in a job where you have the ability to manage your own schedule is like massively helpful. 
It's the same time block strategy that I use to uh, grow the blog to full-time income in nine months, working only at 10 hours a week. And even now I only work 15 to 20 hours a week and we still use it. We've used time blocking. It's not time blocking like you're used to. It's a very unique style of time blocking. But if you end up working at home, that is going to be a massive boost because what it does is it means that if you're supposed to work 20 hours and you need to do X, Y, and Z in those hours, we teach you how to take that 20 hours and get it done in like 12 so that you have time to switch the laundry and putting casseroles and things like that. And you get access to a community who gets that. So what you're going to create is freedom to set your own routines, less stress in your relationships, flexibility to fit in the important things and endless opportunities. So the investment for exit strategy is literally $67. Um, and we also have a payment plan for people that need it. And you also get a special bonus during the webinar. You're going to get the work from home time block strategy for free. So if you end up purchasing, um, if you end up purchasing exit strategy during this, you're going to find the work at home time block strategy right within the bonuses and the course. So you can go to, um, I think they're going to put a link up there that you can purchase that. And that is 100% risk free. It's got a 30 day money back guarantee and results are always guaranteed. And the results are guaranteed even past the 30 days. We work we work around that because um, Teachable and us have a 30 day money back guarantee. But if you've done all the steps and uh, you don't have the results that you're looking for, you can write us and we'll figure out a way to refund your money. So another roadblock that constantly comes up. But what if I'm scared? This sounds like it's really going to work, but I have a family relying on me for income. What if I make the wrong choice and screw this up? So I want you to understand that like, and I think you've probably gotten this from just the, the stuff we've been talking about. This isn't something that you need to think about right now. You do not have to think about what if this works? Like, what if I screw? What if I make the wrong choice? What if I switch jobs and it's, it's miserable? What if like something happens? We have a promise you're never going to jump off the proverbial ledge and hope that you land on your feet that's i cannot tell you we are so against that i we are completely against it. i don't want you to quit your job right now i don't want you to say stick it to the man and quit like there should be no jumping until you clearly see that it makes sense like it would be stupid of you not to quit and shift over to the new job because you've saved up so much money that you've got a really good nest egg. You know that you've already got, you know, like me when I left the state, please, I already had all of the kids booked and a waiting list of 24 people. And I knew based on the um, amount of money that I was making from each kid, I was literally going to be making the same salary. There was, and I had already had a nest egg from reducing our spending by $23,000 a year. So there was no way for me to fail in that situation. Like it was literally impossible for me to fail. And that is what we create with you as well on your unique journey. We want there to be no possible way that you can screw this up. So we're about super strategic moves to go after what you want while setting yourself up for a transition to work from home. And you can clearly see that it makes more sense for you to work from home. Okay. But again, I want to say, if you never do anything, if it's always just this thing in the back of your mind, that's like, oh man, I really wish that I wasn't stuck in this job. Like hard truth. You are not stuck in your job. You are keeping yourself stuck in your job. You could leave at any time. You have literally the only thing that's standing in your way. So exit strategy, it gives you the best results with the least amount of risk possible. And it's 60 to $7. Even if you only complete one module, it pays for itself in a month guaranteed because we start with budgeting. So like you can't possibly screw that up. So if you have any questions and I want to tell you, if you would like to get the freebies that we were just talking about, I need you to email me at rosemary at busybudgeter.com. It's right here on the screen, like right there. Email me and we will get you the master list of work from home jobs. And we will also get you the designing your dreams. And I think we are ready for questions if you guys have any questions. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Cheers. Uh, but as the questions are rolling in here quick, I did just want to mention to everyone again that the link for that course is available in the comments, in the description for the video, and will be emailed to you. Uh, and I did want to cover a question we had right away from a little earlier. Mm -hmm. which was where are those personality tests are available that you're talking about? Yeah. So there's a couple of them. The very first one it's free and it's the easiest is um, the what's called the Myers-Briggs personality test. 
you can actually get a free version. It's kind of like unofficial, but 16personalities.com gives you the same Myers-Briggs test, but they kind of, um, they, it's kind of like a little bit off branded. And the best part about Myers-Briggs that I like is that they actually give you an entire career page, right? Where they teach you about what your Myers-Briggs personality is, where you see successful Myers-Briggs um, careers, where they tend to thrive in. Another one that I love and it is completely worth the money is Strengths Finder. Um, so they have one that I think you can get your top four strengths. And then there's one where you get all of your strengths, the all of your strengths is more money. I think it's worth the money if you can afford it. In the course, we teach you how to get around it. If you can't pay for any personality tests, we teach you how to get the same results for the personality mm -hmm. test without paying for anything. Nice. But in Strengths Finder, um, that is where I found out about my low adaptability. Um, it's where I found out about my marketing abilities. It's where I found out about my empathy. So, and we see this like in in my friend's husband, in students and things like that. There's usually like a giant light bulb moment in Strengths Finder where you're like, huh, like I like once you see it in black and white, you're like oh my gosh, like that is so true about me. And once you pay attention to it, you can see how this one thing affects every aspect of your life. And it's interesting because it's not just great for your career. It's fantastic for your relationships. So my husband huh. is also extremely low adaptability and that's really beneficial for us to like know ahead of time where we're like, this is a low adaptability fight. Let's just skip this. <laughs> and then um, another one is the Colby A index. And the Colby A index is what I would call an advanced one. We don't really have enough time for me to be able to like explain your results, um, but we do this in the course. The reason why Colby A is so important, at least for me, the most important part of Colby A is that it teaches you whether you work in like visual space or physical space. And where this comes up a lot is bloggers, right? So people who are like, oh, I wanna be a blogger, I wanna be a blogger. Great, let's take the Colby A. If you work in visual space, let's choose something else. Because or I'm sorry, let's if you work in physical space, let's choose something else because physical space is something that you you can't just sit at a computer and like have ideas like you need to make something with wood, you need to cook, you need to drive, you need to literally be like, like manipulating things in physical space or you are not going to be happy. So that's mm. like what I call like the, you know, the blogger, the the blogger test, basically. Right. It's so uh, I've. I've always been rather uh, like I had a chip on my shoulder about personality tests, but I think which is probably diagnosable by a personality test. It is. But, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I've also never thought of it in that sense of like, rather than having the chip on my shoulder about someone telling me like who I am as using it as a tool to guide oh, yeah. like what, career would be interesting. What? A, yeah. So I really appreciate that. I love that. Uh, we have a question from Pamela coming in, which is just, oh, how are you spelling that? Sounds like Colby A. So it's Colby, K-O-L-B-E. And then like the next word is just A. And I'm curious with the personality test as well. Was that something you thought about to when you were trying to work from home or... Yeah. So the process that I'm leading through people are, is literally the process that I went through. Um, one of my personality strengths is kind of like being able to figure out how to work around things basically. Right. So I am my own audience. Like I am a super hot mess, chronically disorganized person, probably undiagnosed ADHD. And it's very difficult for me to have motivation. Like I am the person that's going to eat the brownie. If it's in front of me, I will drive to the store to get the brownie if I want one. And there's <laughs> nothing in the world that will stop me. And so we, I was just in a really bad position because like I was exhausted. I was stressed all the time. Like we had been trying and failing our budget on our house for years and years and years, like 12 years. And I just reached a point of like no return where I was like, I've got to do something. And what made me realize it is that one year on New Year's Eve, I was talking to um, older people in my family and they had literally been trying and failing at budgeting and home management for their whole lives. We're talking mm -hmm. like 60 years. And I'm like, that's going to be me. I know it's going to be me. And they're still convinced that this is the year that it's going to change. And it's just like me, right? Every year I'm like, well, this year I'm getting serious. Like last yeah. year was just, we're not going to count that. 
And so what I did that year was I was like, you know what? Screw it. Like from now on, I'm not going to try to change who I am. I'm literally going to work with whatever I naturally am. If that means that I have no willpower, if that means I'm impulsive, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to set up any system that's going to rely on me to do what I'm supposed to do. And that led to things like 15 minute meals using convenience mm -hmm. foods, like Tyson's mm -hmm. frozen chicken, instead of going to the drive through at McDonald's, or Chick-fil-A, it led to things that no one is going to ever write to you about, right. about like how to organize your life, because they're going to tell you about kale smoothies and making, you know, meals from home, because that's what you should do. That's the healthiest way to do it. But we kind of baby stepped our way there. So like the results were astronomical in the sense that like, you know, I'm a blogger that's reached 18 million people. Like I've, I've spoken all over the country. Like I've done all of these amazing things. I I'm super successful. My house is clean. So like we got there in the end, but we didn't get there by trying to do things the right way. We got mm -hmm. there by taking massive shortcuts that nobody else would ever tell you to do because it seems unhealthy or wrong or why can't you just suck it up and do the right thing? And what we found, and I think that's like evident just by my success is we found that that works for people. Like it mm -hmm. works a million times better than telling them that if they want to get out of the Chick-fil-A line or the McDonald's line is to, to make all these meals from home because they're not going to do it. So right. teach them the hacks that's going to actually make them do it. And then eventually they're going to baby step their way to there. Sorry, I get really excited. No, about that. I, I it's 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 really powerful too, and it's something I appreciated about your your previous presentation as well that you did. I think a few weeks ago, but I, you could call it empathetic or just smart, either one. Yeah, but but uh, that you're taking into account the individual. I also appreciate that that eliminates a bit of the kind of inherent shame that can come along with just yeah. comparing yourself to the right way to do it. Cause the right way is always someone with a fancy picture who's skinnier, who's smarter, who's yeah. richer than you. Uh, and I don't, the minute you introduce shame into the equation, I know it's harder to save. It's harder to want to be better. It's harder yeah. to feel accomplished. So yeah. It's I appreciate your passion because, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like when, when we talk to students, like the number one thing we hear is like, I feel broken. And that's how I felt. I always felt like there was something wrong with me. Like, what? like, you know, at the time I was like 25, 26 year old, like, why can't I get my life in order? Like, I don't understand what's wrong with me where everyone else is able to, I mean, at the time I wasn't even looking for major success. I was just looking to be able to show up to work on time and like, you know, to do my laundry. And I constantly felt broken. And the thing is, is like, I'm the same person and I'm, I'm wildly successful now, not because I changed who I was. It's because I embraced who I was instead of trying to like fit myself into the same box that everybody else was in. And then you end up becoming the person you wanted to be in the end, right? That's exactly. The... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I did just want to ask a couple more clarifying questions mm -hmm. about the course. And uh, you may have mentioned it, but I think it's just worth revamping these. Uh, is there a, like a community involved with that as well? Yeah. So what we do now, there is a Facebook group for it. Um, what we actually do, we try to not have people get on Facebook. That's mm. part of like our other trainings is okay. that we try to limit people's time uh, on Facebook and things like that. So there is a Facebook community available if you need it. What we would prefer is that you email us questions and what we do are things called roadblocks. So typically if someone is stuck, other people are stuck too, but they may not have um, the, you know, the motivation or whatever to reach out and say like, Hey, I'm stuck here. So if you get stuck, you email us, we create a roadblock scenario for it. And then we update the course with the roadblock. Um, and then we also, I usually send video messages too. like, you know, I'll just put back a quick video message so you get an answer, but that, that makes it so that it going forward, it prevents the, uh, somebody else from having the same problem. I appreciate Yeah. That you have to be careful not to promote the exact thing you're trying not to promote. Love it. Exactly. Um, yeah. right. What we were noticing was the Facebook group was great, but everybody spent all of their time <laughs> hanging right. out. And I'm like, it's not such a big deal in this community, but in the home management community where everybody's like, I have no time. And I'm like, guys, don't spend nine hours on Facebook. Then we have time. Right. Have. Right. And then they're all in the Facebook group going, why am I not getting anything done? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Love it's, it. Um, section. 
Uh, and then also, uh, just I assume it's lifetime access with all of that for the course. Yep, it's lifetime access. And whenever we update the course, you get updates to it. Um, if When we do bonuses and things like that, we will retroactively put in put you in for bonuses as well. Cool. And uh, just to clarify with Pamela, uh, I believe it was it's sixty nine dollars or nineteen nine or nineteen dollars for three months. Correct. Yeah, that may have been a typo. I'm sorry. That was my fault. I don't no remember worries. what the slide said. Here's just why I had to clarify because she was asking. Uh, we do have to wrap up here a little bit just because of time. But thank you so much, Rosemary, for everyone watching. Please thank Rosemary for her time and the info. And I, I know I really appreciate both the events you've done, your ability to be compassionate and empathetic while still being clear and pushing people to go after what they want and giving a clear, concise path for that. Uh, I appreciate that out there because there is so much snake oil kind of give me money and yeah. I'll tell you how to live your life better stuff. So yeah, it's really beautiful to see a different approach. And I, yeah. I love that. Uh, before we wrap up, do you have any last like parting words or bit of advice, a little nugget we can give people who are starting this journey? Yeah, I think um, it sounds really overwhelming whenever you're starting this and you're like, I really want to do it. And I just, I really want to drive it into your head. If I could beat it in there with a hammer, I would like you, you can do this. I promise mm -hmm. you, you can do this. It's not that hard. You just have to get out of your own way. Like mm -hmm. just, I just want you to start the process. Don't start it with the idea of like, I'm going to be quitting in 12 months. Start the process and just watch it unfold. You don't have to commit again we don't have to commit to quitting until it makes sense. So like, don't be scared about what happens at the end. Just start doing something towards that. Love it. I appreciate that so much. Well, thank you again, Rosemary. For everyone watching, if you like events like this, please like and subscribe to the Discover page on YouTube. We're trying to bring more creators like Rosemary here to offer this awesome content. Uh, and have a wonderful day out there and go at it. Start the journey to working from home, living a better life. Have a wonderful day, Rosemary. Thanks.